I'm not going to be doing very much of an interview because I know that John speaks very, very well. He's going to be talking about the effects of hypoxia. <clears throat> John's got a, a wealth of experience in aircraft, having owned a number of them and flown them in many, many countries of the world. I've got a rough idea that he's going to be talking about flying light aircraft over mountains as part of his speech. I don't think I'll be asking too many questions. John, over to you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for that, uh, that introduction. And um, uh, my talk is going to be about the, some adventures in hypoxia. It will be a short talk, and I've got money riding on it. Where, where are you, Reg? Reg is going to pay me two beers for every minute under, under 10 minutes. Start the stopwatch. And uh, <coughs> Uh, my wife Marguerite and I just returned from a, uh, a trip to North and South America and uh, to Europe and uh, uh, one of the first highlights of course was to get to Oshkosh in uh, Wisconsin and uh, see the fabulous Spaceship One introduced by uh, the designer Bert Rutan and his uh, pilots and uh, of course the Spaceship One and its White Knight uh, uh, assisted it to uh, a flight of 328,000 feet to uh, win the Ansari X prize of $10 million. Of course, I think it cost them at least twice as much as that to, uh, to launch that uh, attempt. However, after Oshkosh, we we're heading south uh, to um, South America, and we went into Lima, Peru, and uh, uh, took a flight to the old capital, Cusco, elevation uh, around about 12,000 feet. And uh, we knew it would be difficult to, uh, uh, to handle that change in altitude. And unfortunately, we didn't, take, uh, we didn't hear about the advice to take it in steps. We just went and won one swell, foop, bang, 12,000 feet, and sort of staggered around the, uh, uh, the airport, uh, feeling quite groggy. But we did rest up uh, before we went, to, went exploring some of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the sites. And uh, we certainly enjoyed that. But um, then we were climbing uh, some of these sites at 12,400 feet. And big steps, I find it quite difficult and, uh, uh, and quite taxing. And uh, uh, so if anybody of you are thinking about doing that, take it in stages to get to uh, the altitude of, of, uh, of uh, Cusco. Uh, of course, then we take the train to Machu Picchu, the old uh, ancient uh, um, the Inca ruins, which is incredible, incidentally. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it's lower down; it's about 8,000 feet, so it gave us a little time to recover. Just the same, we did find it very difficult. So much for the uh, physical limitations of altitude. I thought I'd just mention a couple of the uh, uh, effects uh, of. The, on the brain, the mental effects of, uh, of altitude. And a couple of stories I have. One is that uh, I've been a keen glider pilot for many, many years, and of course we love to fly in mountain waves and go to great altitudes. Not that I've been to uh, uh, all that high, but when we lived in uh, uh, Montreal, we would go uh, mountain wave flying in uh, the state of Vermont, in the green mountains of Vermont. And it's just fantastic scenery and uh, wonderful experiences of, uh, of climbing to altitude. And uh, one weekend, we're, uh, our club was there with uh, quite a few gliders and uh, altitudes of uh, 15 to 20,000 feet were being uh, attained. And uh, uh, my, one of my partners uh, had a, a Fokker 24, a Polish glider at the time, wonderful sleek little thing, stood about this high above the ground. And uh, um, <coughs> my Polish friend Stan was flying, and we're, uh, of course, a little bit concerned about uh, how long he's going to be up at altitude. So he's been up for an hour and a half, and it's about time to call him on the radio. Stan, tell us, what is your altitude? A bit of a pause, and he says, Ooh, it's about 20 to 8. And uh, we thought, well, let's see, that indicates he's been at. Uh, around 16,000 feet for perhaps a little bit too long and maybe you'd better come down again. So, uh, um, 
Oh, so I had some rather strange experiences at that time, it's just a rather, rather poor decisions about like how I'm going to beat up the, uh, the camel's hump at uh, 25 miles away and, uh, and scoot down at treetop level all the way back to the field. But uh, once I get back to 7,000 feet, you change your, uh, uh, your, mental, your mental approach to this sort of uh, going on uh, changes a little bit. Let's move on to another one. 25 years ago, uh, my wife Marguerite and I flew across the Atlantic in our, uh, in our Mooney, our good faithful Mooney, that's one of the family, still in the family. And uh, um, we departed from uh, uh, St. John's, Newfoundland at uh, uh, just after dark. And we're en route to the Azores across the mid-Atlantic. And uh, uh, the, the uh, cleared altitude was 9,000 feet. And of course, you're bound to encounter some cloud and icing. And of course, that's what happened. About three hours into the flight, we're starting to ice up. Uh, Marguerite's job is with the, uh, with the torch watching the wings, the, the ice build up on the wings. Oh, she's also got to watch for bubbles coming through the plastic line from the, from the uh, ferry tank. And uh, she, quite a few times, she saw bubbles, but <laughs> I avoided changing tanks until I was really sure that it was running low. Um, pretty soon we're in cloud for hours and hours, and uh, to shake the ice, of course, one way, one way is to go down if you've got a choice of going down, but a better first choice is to climb. We climbed to 13,000 feet, and uh, although we're still in cloud, the ice uh, gradually sublimated because the air was uh, much drier, and, uh, and um, uh, eventually, many hours later, we uh, break out of cloud, and a little bit uncertain of our position. It's about three o'clock in the morning, and of course, uh, black as the inside of a cow. And uh, uh, but we look down and we see a we see a mountain. We see a mountain peak. And one of the islands in the Azores chain is a volcanic peak <coughs> called Pico. It's about oh, seven or eight thousand feet high, I believe. And as we watch this. And we're looking for lights to identify, make sure that it was uh, really the island of Pico, that the mountain just sort of melted and fell into the sea. And what it was, it was the shadow of a cumulus cloud. So one of the conclusions is that if, uh, if you're 13,000 feet without oxygen for, uh, uh, for five hours or so, and you want to see an island, you're sure to see an island. <laughs> However, the, uh, as you can see, uh, as you can guess, the, the flight was successful. We did <laughs> conclude that. So that's a, enough of my stories. And how much? Let's see. Three beers. Oh, I got, I got three, three beers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Reg. That'll be very good. Okay.